tired, bro. We are here. Hella black. We in this motherfucker. Shit. I'm trying so hard to just <laughs> be a podcast personality right now. I'm finna record this shit. I don't even care to be in here. Fuck it. We doing something new. Hella black. We in this motherfucker. Um, we're, at, we're actually trying to um, secure an alcoholic beverage right now. This is raw, uncut footage. Who knows? We might cut this out. We might not. It's probably gonna be for the patrons. You feel me? I'm trying to be like. So I was thinking of all the podcasts I'd be watching and shit. Yeah. I'd be seeing like people really step into podcast personality mode. And before <laughs> I was gonna get on here and I was gonna complain about how tired I was. I'm like fuck it. I'm gonna adopt. We're not much this, of a drinking This podcast persona. Mm -hmm. this Malibu. I seen some Remy on top of something. What shit is that? Not mine. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be tripping. I'm, I'm not drinking no Malibu. I'm just gonna have to fight through this. Fuck it. What is it? What is it? What is Malibu it? is a chaser, my nigga. Oh, it's that's like a real nigga. Or some shit, right? It's a chaser. That's what you put the alcohol in. I mean, you know, we got when the liquor store. To... We got the liquor store on bear. It's good. We are, we already started this shit. We just gonna power through. Oh, she all rolling. Fuck it. Yeah, we just gonna power through. Hello. This live in that cut footage. Hello, hello, hello black fans. We 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 patrons. <laughs> we just gonna power through it. It's good. We'll it. Appreciate you. All right, appreciate you, bro. It's all good. Yeah, man, like I was saying, I was going to get on here and I was going to fucking complain. <laughs> and I thought to myself, what would Joe Budden do? What would the Joe Budden podcast do? What would all the other podcast personalities do? You know, them niggas just make it seem like this podcast shit is just lit. So like, you just got to do it. So fuck it, I ain't going to get on here. I ain't going to complain. I'm going to step into my podcast personality right now, Hella Black. Is this the first episode since the Playboy feature? Yeah. Oh, you know. shit. See, we got to step into it. We, we officially We, we officially Playboy podcasters now, officially you know. Podcasters. <laughs> we got to be... We gotta. We have a duty to to all the other podcasters. It is our here. duty to fight for our podcast. You know that's what. The, <laughs> that's what these niggas be saying, huh? We we some podcasters. So what what's your uh, podcast personality now that you've been in Playboy and shit? I don't know, bro. I guess I can't be my depressing self on here. I'm not always depressed, but I'll keep it lit. You know, tell a motherfucker when I'm tired or drained. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I feel the same. I, I feel like we both felt the same about that. Recording. Is, I mean, do we overthink record? I wonder if, like, if anyone else that has a podcast goes through these emotions. Is it a burden to record? If it is, maybe we shouldn't be doing it. I don't. I don't know. I also feel like, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go off into a tangent, but yeah, I, wonder, I just wonder if any other like podcasters feel drained when they're recording, or do they feel well? Maybe if podcasting is your only, if that's your only thing you're doing. Or, like, you know, if that's the only thing you're doing in the day is doing a podcast. Like, bro, we work the full day. I know, but then, you so know what I, I'm saying? I've been having but, thoughts about that. We get on here, we talk about all the things that we do. I know motherfuckers like, nigga, oh, well, you signed up to do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I think to myself sometimes. It's like, we always get on here and talk about all the shit we had to do before we came here. It was like, well, nigga, nobody forced you to do this. Nobody asking us either, really. Yeah. They, don't, so they don't listen to hear us complain. So, know. yeah, so I'm trying to I'm trying to get out of all that. But I often wonder <laughs> if, it, if, if there's anyone else that does podcasting, maybe someone that does it for a living. Like, I don't really know that many podcasts, but I, oft, I wonder if podcasters feel drained before and after a recording. Not, every, not all the time, though. There are some episodes yeah. where I feel... Where I feel refreshed afterwards, but yeah, yeah, I feel refreshed after like in the editing process, knowing like, all right, yeah, we did this shit. You feel me? I feel more, but it's I feel similar sometimes. Like after teaching, like I just you can't ask me a question after I teach mm -hmm. because my brain is just like I just talk for two hours, you know. So sometimes I feel like that after podcasting, but then a lot of times this shit is also like sometimes I don't feel like doing it, but then after I do it, I'm happy I did it because I feel better. I think it's all I not I know what also plays a role in it is us waiting to like the last minute to do it. And when I are like waiting till super late at night, you know? So yeah. either like right now it's eight thirty, nigga. Fuck. I woke up at six thirty this morning. Just, I was at the office at seven thirty type shit, seven forty five. Got out of that motherfucker at five o'clock. Yeah. So a nigga has definitely lived a full life today. Excuse me. And then come in here and just try to have you know, meaningful, uh, thoughtful, valuable conversations. That shit takes a lot. I don't. I don't know. I wonder if other people like if if it takes a lot of energy to like to think and craft fresh and meaningful content. 
For me, it does sometimes. But what if we recorded at like 9 a.m.? But we then my ass, you know me, bro. Or uh, <laughs> what's, what's the ideal time for you to record? For me, I don't know. Probably if I didn't have work. Like my mind works best at like nine o'clock at night. I'm my most I'm my most creative self from morning. like nine to one. Yeah. Like nine AM to one PM. That's when I'm like that's when when I was doing journalism full time, that's when I like to write. Yeah. Even at work when I'm doing something that requires me to be a, be creative in a sense, I like to do it as soon as I get to the office. I start every morning off I'll start every morning off with a journaling session. Yeah. That's when I'm most creative. I just like to get shit out onto the paper or onto the document, whatever it is. I feel I'm most creative during those times. So, right now we're we're recording at probably when I feel the least creative. Yeah. <laughs> Eight thirty at night. Yeah, I start at like nine thirty at night. Is my like, that's when I get like nine thirty to like two thirty in the morning is when I'm most creative, or I have like the best ideas, or I'm like the most just like all right, I need to get shit done. Let's do it. When you shit. send me the outline for this, yeah, what was, what was like five thirty. Probably like that. Yeah. I looked at this shit. I'm like, there's no way I'm reading this right now. <laughs> There's no way, and there were a link. There were there were links to like two articles. I'm not. Yeah. I can't comprehend what's being said right now. I've read so much today. I have talked <laughs> so much today. What more do you? Uh, what is this nigga me? sending me? Goddamn, nigga sent me like four or five paragraphs of shit. And if that would have been nine o'clock in the morning, I would have read all of it and soaked yeah. it all up. But it's just right now. I just don't have it in me. My head hurt. What I was thinking about productivity and creativity today, and I was wondering like how. How often do people really, even when I'm in the studio, bro, there is, like, under the influence of nothing, I wonder how easy it is for people to create. Like, I, I feel like if we were, and we sober, right? So if I'm not under the influence of any of anything, it's hard for me to just keep crafting fresh ideas. I feel, so back to the studio comparison, even when I'm around artists and they in the studios, they're working, they're having 12-hour sessions, but a lot of it is spent, you know, smoking, drinking, going back and forth in and out of the booth. When I sit down, I'm like in front of my computer for hella hours. Often, you know, get a little frustrated and upset that I can't keep just pumping out shit. Yeah. Like, damn, today I was working on something, an article that's about to be published in this um, education website or some shit. Whatever. I swear, see, I can't even think of the fucking word. Journal. By this, by this education publication. Yeah. Um, it's going to be published later this week. And I got some notes back from the editor and I was having hella trouble writing because it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, I don't even have anything. I can't craft any messages right now. Yeah. So I was just wondering if that was something that I experienced. Or do you have, like, times? Yeah, we just kind of talked about it. But are you able to just keep pumping out fresh shit, like, throughout the day? Like, can you just sit down and just type, 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 go on the meetings all day? Hell no. Nah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's, like, it's that capitalist, capitalistic system. I got system a coworker like who can, nigga. Eight hours of just sitting. Like, I can't sit down for hell long. Like... I'll be in the office, I'll be at my desk for like 30 minutes and I gotta get up. Like, I can't, it's very hard for me to sit for two hours. I got a coworker, my like, nigga. I can't do shit like that. I really think she works the entire time. If she's not in a meeting, she's on a phone call. If she's not on a phone call, yeah. she's on her computer. I've just never seen someone be so productive and yet so efficient. So I know it's possible. I know she's not doing Adderall. I know she's not. <laughs> I, she for sure not doing Adderall. I know she's not. I don't know what she's. Does coffee do that to you? Some people. Fuck. I need whatever she's on. I want to ask her, like, how the fuck do you... She was also, like, a fucking rocket scientist or some rocket scientist or some shit. She's, oh, like, she's hella smart. Yeah. Let me know what y'all do with y'all creativity, man. Or how y'all are able to be so productive. Because I'm, I'm trying. I want to be productive as shit. But you are productive, though. Yeah. <laughs> Not as productive as I want to be. Yeah. I feel like that's... I feel like you, we, we both have high high standards for ourselves of like what we can do. Yeah, I think that's part of it because I feel like, in my in my opinion, you're one of the most productive people I know in terms of like all the different things you handle. Yeah, then to be able to handle it all, not a lot of people could do what you do. Yeah, in my opinion, I just be feeling. Yeah, I just sometimes I wish, but it's only natural, you know. Yeah, I feel like it's also like that inner critic of us. Yeah, that comes in and being a former athlete, I feel like part of that. At least for myself, I'm always trained to like be hella critical of yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I could have done this better. I could have done this better. But, like, actually, it's okay to, like, I did what I had to do today, and that's fine. I don't know how to approach life that way. It's like, when projects or problems or situations are presented are presented to me, I think about how to solve that issue right then and there. And that's hella detrimental. That's hella, I know that's not healthy. Um, 
I feel but it, that's just the way it is for me. Like some things presented to me, I'm like, okay, take it. Take, I was, we were just talking about the um, fundraiser that I'm planning, right? Take the fundraiser. That's, I'm trying to knock all, everything out in one day. I'm trying to think about all the steps in one day. It's like, bro, that's not possible, my nigga. Like, just knock yourself out. Yeah. But that's just how my brain works. I fucking hate it. I think it's one of my biggest flaws. I'm similar. Yeah. It's like, if a problem comes up, I'm like, nah, I, I just got to fix it. I feel because like it gives me anxiety, too. So I think part of it is my anxiety is like, all right, if a problem happens or something comes up, I just want to deal with it right there. So I don't overthink it. Mm-hmm. I know I have a tendency to overthink things. I'm like, all right, nah. Like, you just trip I around. I definitely have an overactive mind. I'm always overthinking some shit. Always. I think a lot of creative people have that, though. Too. You know, we're both pretty creative in different ways, you know. But I haven't got to talk to that many people about their creative process. Even as someone that works in music, I don't really get to talk to people. I, I've witnessed it sometimes, but I haven't really talked to people that much about it. In the studio, is like a whole different, I don't know, it's a, di- it's a different vibe, it's a different, uh, I feel like that's just, I also think it's an arena that like um, breeds creativity or also just like harnesses it, and yeah, it's a lot of different vibes. Yeah, an office space is not a space that. Yeah. I don't know if this is the most creative space in here where we're recording either. (laughs) Fuck. I got snakes behind me and shit. (laughs) We here though, regardless. Oh yeah. What episode is this? 26? 26. Is it? Yeah, bro. You sure? Because the last one was 25 with Raj. Yeah. Episode 26. Maybe. We fucking here. Excited about that. Yeah. But now this is actually a great place to record. It's my recording, where honestly, bro, I don't give a fuck. We I wonder what the pod, like, what do podcasters do to, to get creative? You know, like, what do these podcasts do for their space? You, do you think they, like, have a thing about their space or they're like, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I feel like youth, when we were recording at Youth Radio, like an actual studio. Yeah. I feel like that was, it used to put me in his own kind of, you know. Like See, you in a studio. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I used to, I used to feel like I was in the zone. Mm-hmm. I'm drawing the blank now. I'm pretty sure it's 26. No, we are on episode 26. I just saw it. For sure. Episode 26, we here. Hebel Black Podcast, all the way tapped in. Thank you for listening to our rant. We gonna drop that whole rant on y'all, because it's... I think we should just put this total raw, just like even the intro part should go on um, YouTube. I think that would be lit. They it's don't lit. like it. Who gives a fuck? At this point, we should get back to doing it for us. For real. So, like us on SoundCloud. I need people to like subscribe on YouTube too, bro. We got some subscribers, but we ain't got enough. I'm like, we don't really promote the YouTube channel though. Yeah. Like it's not like we're posting like, oh, go follow us on YouTube. I've never promoted. Uh, I've never posted. Promoted. I maybe did it for like. Promoted is promote and posted it. That's <laughs> one. I've never posted on any of my social media shit. Like, go follow on the black on. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. I think we need to start doing that shit. Do we really? That yeah. just seems like another job. <laughs> that just seems like another <laughs> job that I do not want to do. Fuck. Bro, I just want to keep posting this raw content. Yeah. Just wanting to go how it go. It is what it is. Yeah. Maybe we could get somebody to do it for us. Get us a white slave. Uh, <laughs> a, white, a white intern. <laughs> it's my white slave, bro. Uh, it's a shit. Friday reference for those that don't know. But yeah, like this shit on SoundCloud. <laughs> subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. You feel me? Leave we us get a rating plays. On, yeah, give us on, po- on the podcast. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Open that iTunes right now and give us a five star rating. If it ain't five stars, I don't want it. Thank you. <laughs> we need that five star rating on iTunes for sure. But I appreciate everybody who's supporting Hell Black Podcast. You know, who've been supporting us for a minute now. You feel me? It's I almost, definitely do. I'm grateful. Yeah, hella grateful, and I'm. Hopefully you learning something from me. If not, I'm sorry I'm wasting your goddamn time. But at least we ain't wasting your money. Mm. Unless you're a patron. <laughs> Good segue. Subscribe to us on patreon.com slash hellblackpod. The link is probably in the bio. If not, search Patreon Hellback Podcast. That shit will show up. Give us some of that coin. Especially that white coin. We really love reparations. We love the white dollar. The and white dollar doing... stretches further than any dollar. Any dollar. <laughs> but have you heard about the black dollar? 
Have yeah, you heard about the Harriet Tubman's they got coming up? Come on, man. You the blue face? To keep the black dollar in the black community. <laughs> if only these niggas just kept the dollars in the community. Do you know how long it takes for a black dollar to leave the black community? The black dollar circulates around the world three times slower than the white dollar. Just means if you keep the black dollar in the black community, it will grow three times faster than the white dollar. You will have three times the profit, three times the people, three times the job, three times the houses. Bank black. Go get you a rush card. Tap in. Tap in with that rush card. I talk, heard they got you know good like APRs. Shit is just so <laughs> natural. That's how you know we used to really be them, bro. Because <laughs> it just comes too fucking natural. I swear to God, bro. Fuck. <sighs> Man, so speaking of like my past ashiness, it's something that like kind of got brought back into my mind because the brother nature nigga, the shit that happened with him. I seen you had some pretty spicy takes on, bro. Was it uh, spicy? Oh, we could we could just we could get into it. But for me, what what made me think of what it it made me think about a conversation that I have with myself and others um very often, but it's I don't know, for some reason people think growth means not being held accountable for past actions or words, whatever. So it's like I've definitely I don't it, it'd be hard to even not hard, but I be trying not to st- I try to be cautious of how I say this because I've said it to you, but I, it's like it's, I feel like you know where I'm coming from, but I also understand that intent doesn't. Versus impact. Yeah, I also understand the importance of intent versus impact. But for me, it's like I've said some very homophobic, definitely some transphobic, some misogynist war type shit. You know, just being yeah. a trash ass cis head nigga. You know, like not. Definitely not since I've been like really learning and unlearning, right? But I've definitely said some things in the past as a result of just the patriarchy and white supremacy, right? Um, but if I was, if people wanted to hold me accountable for that, that's just what it is. I can't use the the lazy excuse of oh I didn't know any better. It's like yo I didn't know any better, but I don't expect you to put up with my shit while I'm learning, like especially if you're saying things that resulted in like you know we saw say this all the times like words mean things, right? Like our th- the way the way we think the things that we say for most for the most part lead to actions and if you know i've had i've said some violent things whether it was in joking whatever it is bro i don't get to determine how people respond to it especially those that were affected by it so i just feel like as we continue to learn and unlearn and as more of this shit surfaces because most of these niggas is trash like ourselves included you know i think we're at least compostable like, at least, yeah, you know, I, ain't, like, I ain't what I used to be. You know, you can post it, it goes back to the earth or whatever, and it does something beneficial. I don't think we, but if land, like, we ain't landfill. <laughs> we still but, trash. Yeah, if someone brings, like, say if I had, like, a classmate that I said some yeah. homophobic shit to in high school, I don't think I was that foul. I always had, like, some type of, I've uh, always, you know, I think I was pretty decent, but I've definitely, like, said, like, some foul shit, right? Um, if somebody, like, held me accountable for it and told me you know or whatever the situation is i can't be like excuse my actions i didn't know any better yeah. i can say yo i didn't know any better but if y'all don't want to support or fuck with me while i'm learning i respect that like that's not your why is it that motherfuckers have to give people a pass while they while they learning we're not giving white folks a pass i'm not giving a white person a pass i think people give somebody a pass if they like what they're doing like oh so yeah, if you're talented, talented, cool. enough, if you're talented, if you're talented like enough, oh sure. i would like this shit brings me something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like we make they excuses. get joy from it. Yeah. We'll make ex- people make excuses for people they like, you yeah. know. And people just rush. I don't know. It's just wild to see how fast people will like rush to defend somebody saying shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Then it's the whole fucking y'all don't give people room to grow. What does letting them grow have to do with not holding them accountable? It's not the like not being held accountable and growing are not synonymous, my nigga. And I don't think everybody was fucking just tweeting Nazi shit out when they was twelve. Like what the fuck? Like, I know for sure I was not <laughs> yeah. on some fucking hell Hitler shit. I probably said some weird shit, but not some shit like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I think it's interesting how fast, how fast black people will cancel other black people, but then just rush to cape for white folks. I mean, do we or always cancel other white? white? Niggas didn't cancel R. Kelly. That's true. Niggas still haven't canceled R. Kelly, so That's we can't true. say we cancel all black folks. Niggas yeah. still talking about, talking about Bill Cosby was about to buy CBS. Yeah. Niggas, yeah, so we don't always cancel black folks. Yeah. So that's just, from what I've seen, I've seen us make a, a lot of excuses for black folks. I just, for, I see I see a lot on my, not on my timeline, because I'm very cautious about who I, who I follow, 
I got a lot of motherfuckers on mute. <laughs> but like, actually, like in the real world, right? Like being around like black folks and shit, and hearing them talk, you can't always protect yourself from that shit or any any human beings or any any group of people. I say black people because that's who I hang around. So like hearing them speak and hearing them make excuses, like all like motherfuckers got to learn or they're only boys or whatever the situation may be. It's like, fam, like, come on, that's not an excuse, bro. You can't use that. You can't use that as an excuse. And also, I, the motherfuckers like teenagers and young adults. Come on. It's like, why can't I just be like, yeah, dude was saying some stupid, you know, or so some wild shit. Like, I'm trying to say stupid. Yeah. You know, saying some wild shit. He was saying some racist, you know? Like, you can start with that. You don't got to rush to defend him at first. Yeah. <laughs> you know? De- yeah, and it's like holding someone accountable does not mean you you don't. Excuse me. I feel like people are afraid to hold people accountable because it means, you know, you don't really fuck with them anymore. But it's like, bro, you can still. F- I feel like holding uh, holding someone accountable is the deepest. Like, one of the. It, it's a. It's a, it's a lot of love. Yeah. Because you like want to be It's one of the most real yeah. things you could do as opposed to letting them do some shit that's detrimental to them and others. Yeah. People don't see shit like that. It's a lot of, like, people who just want to defend people, you know? Like you said, like, there's a lot of, like, yes men and shit, you know? Yeah, and we also hate women and gay and queer and trans folks, so that's, there's that. That's the society, so. Yeah. When I say we, I mean society. Right. I think people get that by now, though. This is episode 26. You never know. Sometimes Hopefully people take know. some of our words and Hopefully try to people twist know. it. Like, people oh, we, know. like, people know. oh, did you hear what Hella Black Podcast said? What the Hella Black like, Podcast is nah. by now. You know where we rocking. You know where we're coming from. Yeah, but it's just, I just want people to understand that you can hold people accountable while giving them room to grow. Facts. And also understanding that brother's a cishead male. Like, that nigga's going to be okay. <laughs> like, if anything, he's going to get a bigger platform. Like, yeah. people ain't tripping off that. People mm-hmm. ain't gonna cancel. Not gonna watch a show anymore. You know. Yeah. And if Brad's like genuine in his growth, because also I think about it from the perspective, I would be sick if people told me I couldn't do like people's breakfast anymore because Some shit I was said. hella homophobic yeah. when I was in high school. Like, even though my homophobia didn't look like beating up gay or queer people, it definitely looked like using gay slurs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it definitely looked like that. And I, I, f- I just don't want to make excuses. There's no no way around it. But I was definitely a product of my very patriarchal and cishet environment. You know what I'm saying? But I would be hella mad if they told me I couldn't. I'm not. I'm not. Um, yeah, I can't do this anymore because of some shit that I did. Or it's not even did some shit that I said when I was 16. I would be a little frustrated. But I just have to accept it. Or I, I can still do it. I just don't have to listen to it. For me, it's just like. I do feel like people should be given the opportunity to grow, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be held accountable. Right. I think you know accountability saying? is the first step to growth. Yeah. You know? And I think people are just rushing to, I don't know, defend when it should be like, oh, okay, bro says some problematic shit. Is he going to own up to it or nah? Is bro going to grow from it or nah? You know? What does, so I seen he did an apology on, on Twitter where I felt, I don't know, I can look it up real quick, honestly. From what I remember, I think bro did hold himself accountable so what well, is yeah, so what does holding yourself accountable look like to you i think the first thing is just admitting admitting you did wrong and then asking or like making those steps to move forward you know like what do i need to read to learn you know or what do i need to do to move forward in a better way you know yeah but like, I, I think it looks you can't i don't think you can really just generalize it you know, because accountability looks different in different situations. I mean, so me? for you, yeah. if somebody was like, yo, when I was 13, Blake don't crack, Blake, Blake don't crack, fucking, <laughs> Blake don't crack. my fault, <laughs> Blake don't crack says, use the homophobic slur towards me. Yeah. What would it look like you holding yourself accountable? I think the first thing I'll do, I'll apologize. That'd be the first thing. Apologize for what I did. Mm-hmm. And try to explain that I've grown over the years and that I'm not to justify what I said. Those are what that's what I did then, but this is me now, I'm a different person. You know, and I could hope I hope that you could forgive me for what I said. Fuck you, monkey. That's what they gonna be <laughs> saying in your act. <laughs> you know? Like yeah. I think that's all you can really do is apologize genuinely and then a part of apologizing is also making sure it don't happen again and taking actions to educate yourself. Mm-hmm. You know? And not just being so stuck in your ways like, nah I didn't do this, nah I didn't do that. It's like that's why the cancel me culture is so dangerous, though, yeah. because 
everybody was trash at one point. Literally. Literally. It, especially, man, I think a lot of people think that, I feel like... Mm, people uh, learn, people yeah. learn something, and then the next day they, like, criticize Experts other people for knowing issue. it. And that's why, it, yeah. you know? And I, I think that's the issue. And that's why I often think it's important that when we're holding people accountable, I think... We, we do a good job too. of saying, like, yo, I also did this. Yeah. So I'm not excluding myself. I think a lot of the times folks like to exclude themselves from the critiques that they're that they're Give you me. know that they're giving. Like, nigga, you not excluded. Yeah, and I remember like it was my junior year in college and my homie, my homegirl, she was just saying they. And I was like, Who like what is they? I didn't know what pronouns were at that point, right? They were talking about their partner. I was like, what is they? Like, what does they mean? You feel me? Like, because I just didn't understand it. Then they educated uh, educated me on it. And I'm like, all right, for sure. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to just ask people pro- their pronouns. Yeah. You know? And I think it's like, I'm just, I don't know why I brought up that situation, but that's the first thing that came to my mind is like, oh, I didn't know. But then I knew. And I was like, all right, once you know, then you have a responsibility to keep learning and to do better. You know? What? Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I have a question as to where, like, the whole council me thing came from. Because there are some motherfuckers who we should not support. Facts. Because there are some people who know, or who won't even, ex- who won't hold themselves accountable, mm-hmm. or they will hold themselves accountable and still do the same things, right? So that's when you stop, should stop supporting someone. Right. But I think the whole council me culture is just hella reactionary from the from the get-go. It's like, oh, this nigga did this? When he, that does seem a little nuts. Like, of course, I'm not. I'm not down with the hell Hitler shit. Like that's out of pocket. Yeah. But I don't know where this nigga was raised. He could have been around a whole bunch of white people. And this nigga like, brown too. Like what the fuck is like? It take time. He put the fucking Nazi symbol. But there also the, was that like, had to like copy and paste that shit. Like, you have to think about there was that one time period. If you think about what our future came on to the scene, and yeah. the niggas like was just spewing Doing like hell up, bro. And I definitely fell into that impressionable ass shit. And I was niggas 16, 17. I was oh, definitely older than him. You feel me? I'm assuming I'm older than bro. But like. Think about that time period, nigga. Like, those yeah. niggas was saying the most wild shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of black kids in that era who fucking were saying homophobic and, like, they were talking about rape and shit, trigger yeah. words, or content warning. Um, yeah, they, they were hella foul, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, shit, I mean, when I was in high school, the way people talked was hella foul. Come on. You know? And being football players, you already know how that go. Yeah. Facts. So... Shit, even in college, I didn't, in college, I was like, bro, that shit, whack. like, I started, I was like, why, why y'all motherfuckers saying this shit? Like, I feel like I, up, I know? feel like I just stopped using, like, homophobic and transphobic slurs probably within the last three years. That's not that, that's hella recent, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's definitely some shit that I said as an adult that was just trash as fuck. Yeah. And maybe I never said it directly to somebody, but I've definitely said it around people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, with my friends, for sure. I just stopped using the B word, like, nigga, in the last year. And I still sometimes use it when talking about white women. And I'm trying to... St- yeah. Mm. I don't... I'm trying to... I just... I realized that... At first, I used to do it as, like, a disrespect thing to white women. I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah. I, I knew what the term meant, and I did use it as a term of disrespect to white women, especially the white women in, like, power. Yeah. Right? Like... You think about like Hillary Clinton and shit. Um, or but then, staff. then I realized there was no room for any misogyny, yeah. and I'm just trying to eradicate it from my. That's what a uh, yeah. Khadija taught me that. Khadija definitely taught me because I remember I should stop saying it when 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 speaking about. Like I haven't used it for black women in a while, a, while, a fairly long time, but I was still using it for um yeah, for white women mostly. Yeah. Yeah. I feel trash even saying that out loud. Niggas are trash. Damn, should I edit that out? <laughs> I don't want to be trash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. But then it's like I also want. But like, it, I think it's good to be transparent for people uh, too. It's nigga, like we're making a critique, job, but also this like shit. this is what we said. But it's about. I feel like this is a, being public about it and speaking about it is also a form of accountability too. Mm-hmm. We ain't acting like we're better than people. We're saying, okay, we've done these things. We've said these things. Yeah. You know, there's room to grow. You feel me? Yeah. We and we're examples of it. Lose my job. Fucking with you. You, you know, said it. I know. <laughs> but I just... Because... The whole point around it... But it was... was yeah. Ahead. I feel like the whole point around it was like... Well, I was trying to say that I just got better at like not using hella like harmful and disrespectful language. And then I'm like, yo, but I still do be using the B word when I'm talking about white women because it 
who I used to be using the B word when I talked about white women because it was like, you know, intentionally trying to be disrespectful to white women because I feel some type of way about them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Khadija told me that there is room for no misogyny. So I don't do that right. to white women anymore. That's gross. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you don't lose your job. Words words <laughs> mean things. Words mean things, y'all. Yeah. Let's try to be better with the language that we use. We not try to be. We have to be better with the language that we use. Um, but yeah, back to the council me culture thing. That's what it was for me. It was just like, fuck, I, f I be feeling, I think we should hold people accountable, but I also don't think we should just be counseling people, especially for some shit that they did as kids and that they're actively trying to be better. That's what I think. Cause then I'm like, then that removes a bunch of us from the movement. Probably all Myself of us. included. <laughs> you know? That just removes a bunch of us from the work. Yeah. I, yeah. And then people try. Yeah. No, I feel it. You got to be accountable and then move on, I feel like, yeah. in productive ways and showing that you're doing productive things. You feel me? Facts. So, but I've also never seen Brother Nature tweet about, like, you know, supporting trans rights or gay rights. You feel me? But you know the or bars. Black lives you know matter, the bar. You, you know me? the like, bar is the floor when you're trying to yeah. be a leader of the movement. The bar is the floor. As long as you, you know, as long as you, uh, what would you say? Or something like the standards. As long as you're speaking some, like, black first shit. Good. Along, yeah. Honestly, in this era, right now, all like, you have to have is BLM in your bio. But he Damn got, it. he got, he got, he got famous for like, anim, for like, I don't even know if he does like animal rights shit, but he got famous for like, you know, being a dark skinned person. That's like in nature. Like that's hella lit right now. Shit, he, he light skinned. He also, I mean, a I brown mean person. Brown, I mean, like not white. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant. Um, but I feel like he also like showed a different side of you know, a brown person. Like it ain't Steve like, Irwin. It's yeah, you know, like it was. It was lit to see that. <laughs> yeah. To see a nigga that's like in nature. That's not Steve Irwin. That's not a white person on him. Yeah, it's National Channel. Geographic or yeah. some shit during Shark Week. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think cancel culture is a part of capitalism too. It's like, what are we just canceling people and then like disposable? You know, yeah. I feel like that's what capitalism and like neoliberalism. I'm counting down the days till I get canceled. It's like you just throw people out type shit. You know, everybody and people it. aren't redeemable, or people can't grow. Yeah. You know, not to say everybody can redeem themselves from certain things, because I think there's certain things that you gotta um, suffer. A con, you know, yeah, like rape, probably one of those things. It's like, ah, oh, my nigga, that's. I'm just gonna stay away from that for right now. I'm not in the right headspace to talk about that. Yeah, I've already said that I called a white woman a bitch in the last few months. I'm just gonna <laughs> stray away from that topic. Um, yeah, there are some things that you kind of can't come back from. And again, it's about, you know, actively trying to do better while accepting that, you know, a nigga made a mistake. Yeah. Because I feel like both of us, our politics, we've grown a lot. Hella in the past three, four years, bro. For sure. I think I've done the bulk. Not I think. I know I've done the bulk of my work in the last three years. Especially since meeting people like you, Khadija, and yeah. AB. I've definitely got a lot better. Who else is how many shapes in politics? A bunch of people on Twitter. Like the folks we've interviewed. Yeah. I think so. Help me a lot. It's also about growing everybody, you know. I think sometimes a lot of people are very privileged, too, to have access to knowledge as well, to these things, right? It's like, especially, like, I feel like amongst college students, that's where I feel like cancel culture is the biggest. Like, you, you said one theory wrong, or, you know, it's like, oh. It's so, okay, nigga. Sir, bro, you just learned that theory in your life, man. Like, fuck? come on. Like, you just learned the word intersectionality yesterday, and now you're criticizing other people for not knowing it. Yeah. Or you go back home for Thanksgiving, like, Dad, you didn't know what the fuck intersectionality means? What the fuck? It's like, no, educate your dad, or educate your mom, you know, educate your grandparents around it. Facts. You know? Because I guarantee you they know what the theory is, they just never heard the word. Because they know about shit, you feel me? So... Should we talk about the past breakfast program? People's Breakfast Oakland? Yeah, we can, for sure. Just to update people. I know a lot of people, you know, listen to this to hear what's going on in terms of the organizing work we're doing. Yeah. People's Breakfast Oakland. I was like, was that two weeks ago? Or last weekend? Fuck, when was last weekend? It was last weekend? Nah, last weekend just oh, last passed. Last weekend was just Today's Monday. Fuck. Yeah. So the weekend before that. It was yeah. like eight days ago or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have mixed emotions about it because... You know, pulling up and seeing all the people already in line 
was like, oh, we about to help a lot of people today, but also we about to help a lot of people today. Like, that's some bullshit. Yeah. Like, a- this shouldn't be the conditions that people live in. Like, this was definitely the first program where, like, as soon as we had tables set up, people were waiting in line. You know? Yeah. And, like, we didn't even have the food out, didn't have clothes out, hygiene packs out. Like, people were waiting in line. There was probably a line for, like, an hour and a half of people, like, getting food and stuff. Like, and I've never seen it like that. Yeah, I don't know. You know? I, Can you remember any time where it's been like that? Hell no. That shit don't be feeling good either. I don't know how people... Yeah. I feel like once you're able to step out of, like, the savior complex shit and you start looking at the work that you're really doing, it's like, yo, this is sickening. Like, I don't fuck with it. And the fact that... It wasn't a good thing that we had a line. I felt like, even though it felt like, all right, we're we're helping all these people. It's like but shit it's getting like, worse. It shit is getting worse. Yeah, and we watching it happen in real time. Right, like right there, shit is getting worse because like, we've been at that spot for yeah. a minute. You feel me? Yeah. So that's that's what that's what really made it suck for me is, you know, we're be we're we're um, starting to be more and more of a necessity for the community, and I don't fuck with that because it puts. It puts a hella un, it puts a burden on us, bro. And I already talked about, you know, how I feel about that. I definitely, hey, I don't know, I, I hella want to be there for the community, but then it's like, bro, it's motherfuckers whose job this is to be doing this shit. Like this is like, we we spam hella tax money on taxes, dollars on my nigga, like millions and millions and millions of dollars coming through the city of Oakland. The port of Oakland is the biggest port. The fuck, Silicon Valley, Twitter, all that motherfuckers all over in. You feel me? The bay. It's like my nigga, we out there twice a month. Billions of dollars. Twice a month, bro. So what about the other? I mean, also though, I have been seeing a lot of people outside, and I fuck with that. I've been seeing a bunch of other people. I don't know what they motive. I don't know. I've been seeing people out there feeding people, and I fuck with that. Yeah. And I appreciate it because I'm like, it takes a big burden off of. I be feeling guilty like when I know like damn, I'm not gonna be back out here for another 14 days. I be feeling terrible about that shit. It's definitely one of the, like the worst parts of sometimes of doing the breakfast program. It's like fuck. There's no one that is needed tomorrow, yeah. and then you can't do it tomorrow. Not even tomorrow. You know this shit is needed. It's gonna be needed in a couple, couple like, hours. As far as the food yeah. concerned, like yeah, we clothe people, and you know we don't just give away scraps. Like you know we give away good meal, good meals, and also like very valuable like you know shit that we that I would still wear, but I just know somebody needs it more than me. So I know like the clothing that's a little different, that could last, but the food that shit is go- they're going to need food. Within the next few hours, and right. to know that like we, and then it's uh, not really having like the necessary funding to fully run a to run a fully functioning breakfast program, because I I talk to you about I'm like the Panthers is doing this shit every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that should be frustrating, bro. But it's just it's wild to see. I mean, it's election year, right? So it's now a lot of people are getting evicted right so all these tough sheds which a lot of people who live in them call them concentration camps those are being seen as the solution to houselessness in oakland you know so i think that's the reason why there was so much more people is because a lot of people are getting pushed that way because camps and camps are getting evicted you know like that Northgate sycamore like all that is gone now Mm -hmm. you know all that that whole camp has been destroyed by louis shaft's administration so now it's like it's getting more and more concentrated, you know. So that's why, I like, usually we're able to go to two different locations, and we were only we only had enough food in that one location. We fed probably two hundred people on that one block. Yeah, minimum. So think about the and they ran out of food, and we couldn't go feed the people that you know the other encampments. That shit was, yeah, it sucked, bro. And so now, like, then it's also it's also frustrating to see, like, okay, this is the impact that fifteen of us can have with a couple hundred dollars. Niggas, thousands of people working in politics who got way more time and resources than we have. Like, we know that this can be fixed. We know it. We know that the homeless crisis, the homelessness crisis in fucking the Bay Area and all over... Can be fixed. Can be fixed. It can be eradicated very easily. Niggas just don't want to do it. Like, we, we've shown that us and all, us and all the organizers before us before us have shown that this can be fixed, that people can get food, clothing, and housing. Right. We've shown it. But it's just the government is making a very conscious and strategic decision to not do it. Yeah. I mean, essentially the actions of Libby Shaft show that they want a different Oakland. 
they want to kick out all the people, you know what I'm saying, yeah. who've had roots here for years, and now are on the streets. They don't want to provide them housing. They want to provide them tough sheds and then ship them out on bus buses. What do we people are being evicted from these tough sheds? So it's like you're saying, oh no, this is a solution to homelessness. Nah, the solution is more housing. Is actually building housing. Like, how do you have two million dollars that you don't spend? City of Oakland owns hella properties, but would be Shaft sold hell of the properties. Those properties could have easily been made into, you feel me, housing. Niggas opening coffee shops, pizza shops. How many fucking pizza shops do we need, bro? And how much, like, oh, there's hella fucking, like, open plots in Oakland, too. Like, for, of land. Like, the city could for sure buy some of that and build housing for the homeless. Like, I really, I don't know. I, I feel like the house, there should be housing, you know, but medical services within it, social workers within it, job training programs within it, you know, food. The things that these programs. people really need to thrive. Yeah. Not just survive. The Some like drug rehabilitation, mental health services. Like, that shit is possible. It's like, you tweeted something like, how much money does the city of San Francisco spend on homeless Yeah, people? and that shit was wild when they were talking about how, when they were addressing how much they were spending on homeless services, but a lot of it was going to fucking. The police and shit. Terrorizing them, yeah. honestly. So it's just like, they spend millions and millions of dollars to keep the problem going. Right. Yeah. And it's like, shit. That's why this shit, this system, bro, ain't no saving it. Right? All the, all this is happening by design. It's been happening. And then you have, you know, Twitter, like, being against the proposition that's going to, like, help rent control and shit like that. Help stop evictions and shit. You feel me? So it's... These big corporations are the reason why it's happening. Then these big politicians, Libby Schaff, is enforcing, like, you know, what the corporations want, you know, f all for tech, essentially. And you have this houseless crisis, Nigga. which houselessness has always been a crisis. It said in the latest fiscal year, San Francisco spent roughly $380 million on services related to homelessness. What, that, that, where did that money go? Dollars? 380 million, nigga. So a lot of it, I think, goes to SROs. I was mm -hmm. sitting on this panel and they were talking about some... some and what's folks, SROs? Uh, single residency oc occupancy, I think. Like, single night type shit. Um, so a lot of that money goes to paying those SROs, apparently. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's not that much money for direct services. And then a lot of it goes to, like, they'll say homeless action teams, but that's really just, like, cops. Like, the SFPD apparently has... A whole like homeless division in their police department that's to wild. evict people, right? That's wild, bro. So it's like you don't see as many camps because people are just getting like evicted, evicted, evicted. Yeah. You know, just like that. You feel me? So it's like. Yeah, it's like it's not going to. It's not going to. Um, like the money isn't going towards eradicating the problem of homelessness. It's either of like moving them somewhere else, mm -hmm. housing them for one day. It's not going to getting these people from out of homelessness into some stable housing. That's yeah. where the money should be going. And there's not a lot of, like, SROs type housing. Like, so, like, this lady was talking about, like, with SROs, it's like, once you're in them, like, you're in them, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's how she was explaining it. So it's like, not a lot of them become open because you're in them until, you know, you know, you know, you pass away or something like that, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, more housing needs to be built. You know, and it's just, it's simple. It really is simple. Like, they make it try to seem like, oh, we'll have all these panel discussions and we'll bring in all like, the experts. Nigga, like, no. Mean? Niggas need houses. And that's that. Like, there's more niggas abandoned food. Yeah. That, and that's that. Niggas need medical care. Niggas need services. It's really not the... <laughs> like, I'll I be so confused when you gotta... When you, when we got, like you said, we gotta have all these fucking talks, all these articles being written. It's all like, my research. nigga, where's the action, bro? Where's the action? That's where motherfuckers be losing me at. Yeah. At the end of the day... There, there are people without houses. How do you solve that? You create more houses. There are empty people spaces. People don't have food. How do you solve it? You give people, people food. food. It's that fucking People simple. don't have medical care. How do you solve it? Give people money. Like, people try to make this shit so complex, and that's, that's what capitalism does, essentially. Like, that's why socialism is important, because it's guaranteed human rights. Food, education, housing, like, that's guaranteed for all people. The fuck? Not just the people who... Who are lucky to have it, essentially. You know how we can fix all this, right? Getting out there and voting. That's all you got to do, I think. 
Hey, vote or die. Vote or die. This vote. This voting fucking. Like, this podcast is actually sponsored by Vote or Die. So if you don't vote, <laughs> don't play, baby. Hey, I've been so I'm like lost with all the conversations around voting. It's it's. Hey, your ancestors died for your right to vote, the Lindsay. I hate when people trick me with that one. Oh, they almost got me with that one when Obama was running. They almost got me. But um, they got my ass, nigga. I voted oh, yeah, in two thousand. Was eight? Yeah. Was you eighteen in two thousand eight? Nah, two thousand twelve was when you ran for the second. Oh, two thousand twelve. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, that's how I know it's been a long day. <laughs> it's it's just it's fucking wild, bro. How people really want to make this system work for them? How my nigga? How are you gonna make a system that was designed to keep black people in poverty? To colonize indigenous land. To keep back black people enslaved. How are you? How do you think the same system that enslaved you is gonna be the same system that liberates you? That gives you freedom? I just, it's not that hard. I think it's because some people be getting crumbs from the system. It's, they like the crumbs. Mm-hmm. You know? The trickle so, down shit. Trickle down economics. Trickle down economics. Uh, yeah. it, it also <laughs> doesn't help when you have black leadership, people who you look up to, people who you admire, people who are put at the forefront of the movement when you have them reinforcing that same logic. And the state orchestrated activists is what Fred Hampton calls them. Bro, you, if the state supporting you, you for sure ain't on no shit that's gonna dismantle it. The state will never give the people that could possibly tear it down a platform and power. Why would they ever play into their own demise? Right. Think, would you do that? Fuck no. You would never do anything that's bad for you. That's bad for your health. You wouldn't do that. Come on, my nigga. So for me, I just be getting so fucking lost. But we had this conversation earlier, right? About okay, I understand. Voting is like putting a band-aid on it. Let's put a band-aid on our problems until we can actually, like, you know, do the things that are necessary for us to revolt. But that's, like, the end of the discussion often. It's like, all right, people always talk about, all right, voting is, like, harm reduction. But 364 days out of the year, you're not doing anything else. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't know, sorry, I cut you off. No, you, you good. Keep going. I'm you know, so it's like... Yeah. People want to just act like voting is a civic duty. It's like, nah, actually, my civic duty is people's breakfast Oakland. Why fucking wait to vote once a year, once whenever the fuck you vote, right? Like, to wait for these for these issues to change when you could literally organize to make solutions, right? You can organize to put pressure on the city to stop evicting houseless people, right? And then, yeah, I think people need to be getting out of office. But, like, knowing that this system isn't set up, I'm not going to, like, spend hella time for... Yeah, or or if when I do, I'm not gonna act like it's a. I'm not gonna act like it's the end all be all. I'm not gonna tell niggas like, oh, this is the way to liberation. Like when people say, shit like, uh, not voting is what got us President Trump. Okay, not voting. Nigga, first of all, you don't even got us all these all these white supremacists, my nigga. Like Charles College, and if you even in California, like California blue state, nigga, it don't fucking matter if you vote. It's gonna be fucking blue. Hillary Clinton was gonna get that shit. Mm -hmm. Like. So why the fuck you? Oh, you gonna know, blame somebody for not voting? You better and niggas better quit. Niggas better chill with blaming black millennials yeah. for this shit. I know that. With this nigga that's in office right now, that shit is what nigga? What? Don't you ever? And well, who's I supposed to vote for you? The war criminal Hillary Clinton? Okay, my nigga. So at least let's 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 just call it the lesser of two evils. Let's not act like Hillary's gonna yeah. provide me my liberation, bro. She's still gonna kill me. Just might be a little bit slower. I might have a few. More I ain't gonna lie, my nigga. I'm making more money under this administration than I was under Obama. So. If niggas want to call a spade a spade, I'm like, let's just keep it lit. Let's, let's keep it all poor under Obama administration. Oh, me too, bro. <laughs> let's keep it lit. That being said, bro, come That's on. That's what I mean, but that also speaks to the local shit. Like, bro, we live in, you know, Oakland and Berkeley. Like, shit's different out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, local politics, this sh- local shit has more of a daily effect on your life. So these voter die ass niggas rarely ever talk about local shit. It's like niggas trying to push me to go vote. And of course, I'm I'm pushing Kat just because of what I've seen her do and like the, the information that I've been exposed to for her, but like I don't know what props are going on. I don't, I don't. And these voter die progressive people ain't even gonna give any fucking information. I haven't seen nobody tweet no information out yet. I mean maybe that's why I follow or whatever, but I haven't that information has not been accessible. I seen like what props should you vote? Like I'm gonna have to go look and you know There's some prop that's gonna affect like trans shit that I'm gonna vote for once I figure out the correct way to vote on that. Um, there's some housing Rent shit. Rent control. I think yeah. it's prop prop ten. Yeah, I seen actually seen Tay, Tay go go. Mm-hmm. I think that's Tay's. I seen Tay tweet some shit earlier, and they were saying some shit about prop ten, and that they don't know 
what they gonna vote for, but they know they're gonna vote this way on Prop 10. Let me see. I believe it's yes on Prop 10. Because Twitter nigga uh, Jack was saying, well, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Basically, Prop 10 is, I believe, rent control. Okay. Look what that nigga said. I don't want to say some shit. Y'all niggas, I'm trying to grab my phone that motherfucker up there. <laughs> God damn I'm it. trying to find That's what we do for these video episodes, y'all. The nigga Tay had just posted something earlier. You know Tay just be like going on Twitter and then just deleting his shit and then <laughs> come back on type shit. Fuck. That's exactly what might have happened. So it starts as a... Uh, I did, and it's not popping up. It's not popping up. up. Fuck, nigga. Like, Tay Go Go, some shit. Mm. Yeah, it's not there. No Search of the Prop 10. On Twitter, we can't get information from these niggas. <laughs> but I believe Prop 10 is about rent control. See? We should maybe do an episode where we actually study. We need this to shit. get some motherfuckers that's really in this shit. In this electoral shit, because it's like. Maybe someone from shit. Libby's camp. <laughs> <laughs> it says yes on 10 for LA Tenants Union. This is there at. Gotta trust them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's yes on 10. We should get, where is the profit? Um, Basically, it's like rent control and shit. I've never fully understood the concept of rent control. Rent control is basically like, I know in the city of Berkeley, it can only raise every two years by a certain percentage. Certain percentage, right? But if your income isn't increasing by that rate. Even your income could increase. But I'm saying, so yeah. like say if, boom, I got rent control yeah. and they raise my shit every two years or whatever, but I'm still making the same amount of money. Yeah. Or I lose, you know what I'm saying? Like I yeah. lose my job or some shit, you know? Right, it's definitely not something that's perfect. That's okay. for sure. But it definitely is more, it's more pro-tenant, right? So, like, when I moved out of my apartment in Berkeley, they raised that shit by two racks mm -hmm. because I was the original, like, person on the lease. But they could never do that when I was living there. They could only raise it a certain amount because I, because of rent control in Berkeley where you can only raise it a certain amount amount okay. every two years. That makes sense. I'm not happy about it, but... Whatever. And I believe it will tax these big companies too to create like money for like I think to help solve homelessness or houselessness that's why Twitter was opposing it but yeah that's I don't I gotta look more into props I can't speak <laughs> yeah speak on it but I think those things matter more you feel me than fucking presidential shit I just want to also at the end yeah. of the day this shit ain't gonna save us that's what I want us to acknowledge, and I just want us to understand that do not let these people fucking fool you, especially, again, I'm critical of black leaders, because leaders, that's who I hang around. I don't really, I know I can't trust no white person to ever lead me towards liberation. I know that the odds are very slim, but, you know, if it's going to be black folks out here manipulating the masses, the black masses, like, bro, that shit ain't cool. Shit. And especially, it's hella... I know why Neo Colonial was out here, bro. Yeah, I, I know. I know why they do it because it's appealing to the, to the white gaze. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there's a bag associated with yeah, it too. It's you gonna you gonna you're you're gonna be appealing to white folks. You're gonna look good to them while you shucking and jiving, pushing the same system. That shit is some overseer ass shit. I swear, bro. I don't fucking get it. I don't understand how you. I do understand, but yeah, it's just hella frustrating to see people out here trying to convince. And you know, like you said, right? A lack for most for most. Poor black folks. The only, the only, um, the only outlet they have to to this shit. The only way they're getting these, this information, the only way they're getting this education is from black folks, and they trust in these black folks. So, okay, mm -hmm. you look like me. I'm gonna trust you, especially if you came from some shit that I came from. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna trust you to lead me. The they're right like, way. oh, I grew up in this neighborhood too, but they be on some shit where they're really trying to gentrify the neighborhood. You know, it's gonna bring more jobs for who. More jobs yeah. isn't the solution. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, bro. It's hella frustrating, bro. That shit be pissing me off. But be it's wary like, of the black leader yeah. that's trying to tell you to work within the same system that's enslaving you. Because at the end of the day, but I feel like a lot of people just don't want to speak the truth. Right? It's like, people truth don't... don't pay well, my nigga. <laughs> that's facts. Oh, we have to integrate and change it from the inside out. Nigga, Martin Luther King said... I think I've integrated my people into a burning house. Y'all niggas love to quote Martin Luther King, but we'll never talk about that quote. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of his life, he's like, bruh, I really, integration is not fucking working. That's why they popped him.
Because he was also becoming anti-capitalist too. Yeah. And anti-imperialist. Right. So it's like, how are you going to appeal? How do you think your oppressor who put you in this condition is going to somehow save you out of the condition? Why You're going to work they? for the oppressive system that and somehow the overthrow it? It's like, oh, be the spook, by, spook that sat by the door. You niggas ain't spook that sat by the door. You niggas ain't fucking organizing guerrilla warfare. like. But everyone's like, oh, yeah, we got to have that attitude. It's like, but at the end of the day... You're like, no, you get comfortable. I ain't gonna lie, when I worked in uh, tech for like three months, I'm at these tech companies, I'm like, damn, this shit, this shit kind of nice. Hella free food, hella free shit. And I had to be critical of like, oh, damn, that's this is how, this, they, get this how they get niggas. Like, man, I was taking shit out the bathroom. They had like free <laughs> free mouthwash, toothbrushes and shit. I was like, I'm taking all this shit. Inclusion, how you kill a revolutionary, my Bruh, nigga. Give me a like, taste of that shit. It's how you kill a false revolutionary. Yeah, you know, I stay solid. Blake don't crack, motherfucker. Never fall, never ban. Free O three. Yeah, uh, I don't even know what that nigga politics like. <laughs> we gonna have to edit this episode. I don't give a fuck. We're editing this. Keep all the shit at the beginning. You can't edit this shit, bro. What nigga? You said I can. Yeah. I'll figure it out. I'll pay somebody to do it. I swear to God, I will. I'll figure it the fuck out. Oh uh, fuck. We need to wrap this because I'm tired. Like I get ready for work tomorrow. Damn, it's hard. It's been like an hour or two. I'm for really real? tired, bro. Yeah. All right.